let me tell you something funny. Two things, I give you examples, simple things. One of my misspelling was juice for last. Listen, one of them was egg. No way. I misspell <laughs> these things. <laughs> I laugh at it because it's like a joke. You are now listening to the IELTS podcast. So you're living in Perth. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, I live in Perth. Yeah, I was um, I was a student here. I I have done my master in architecture. So for the immigration process, you know, I need to get IELTS so seven each in order to be able to get my permanent residency. So. <laughs> <laughs> what was your score last time? The last time you did it. The last time was six point five, seven point five for my speaking. Mm-hmm. Uh, seven um, writing, six listening, five point five reading. <laughs> wow, five point five, right? Okay yeah, then. <laughs> yeah, I got all sort of scores, you know, like six point five for reading, six point five listening. So, you know, I got like I have uh, sat for the exam uh, five times, so I got all sort of a score. But it was my first time to get like I received seven for writing. So all my score used to be six for writing and then suddenly jump to seven. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, exactly, you know, when I look at the title, you know, for your book, jump, you know, jump from six to seven, I was like, yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's awesome. what I wanted. Yeah, so yeah, I listened to your instruction, like, uh, yeah, I was confused at the first place, then, you know, how to organize my essay. I have uh, read lots of things through, uh, you know, different websites, so then, um, you know, I realized that, you know, I have to um, focus on something which is more useful, so I found your um, instruction more useful than other, you know, other tutors or um, other website that I searched through. So, so that's why look, I follow that, and then suddenly jump from six to seven. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, yeah. awesome, man! And uh, that's that's good. No, I'm I'm really happy actually because uh, you were a perfect student. You know, you did every single task that was sent to you, and you did it fast. And you was like, usually you got the emails back to me within 24 hours, which is what I like. And then straight on to the next one. And um, so what was the biggest challenge you had with the writing before you, um, before you actually looked at the sentence guide, before we started working together? I was confused. I wasn't exactly sure how to uh, organize my essay because... Uh, because different uh, tutors and different guidelines might say different things. So um, I was confused how to structure that, right? Four paragraph, five paragraph, uh, where to write my opinion, how to start my opinion. And so so I was confused. When I read this sentence guide, I realized that, yeah, that's it. It's uh, more specific. It's what I was looking for. For example, when it says um, you need to structure your essay, then after that it gives you an example and says, okay, you need to write your introduction in this way, you need to support in that way, your example should be like this, this is poor example, this is good example, this is a great example. So when I uh, went through it, I realized that, yeah, uh, this is specifically um, needed for a student because most of the websites and lots of the books talks generally about how to um, write an essay, but they don't specifically talk about how to um, how to organize it paragraph by paragraph and how to support your arguments, how to uh, write your uh, topic sentence. You know? mm-hmm. Exactly, exactly. I, I noticed the same thing because before when I was just a normal teacher and I had to do the first IELTS class, I went online and I did exactly what all the other students did. And I was like, okay, how do we write this IELTS task two essay? And exactly like you said, they said, use a structure, structure your writing, use these words, however, nevertheless, 
and give an example and stuff like that. But the thing is, right, if there's 250 words, then just through experience, I realize that, okay, that's maybe about 13, 14, 15 sentences, roughly. So each one of these sentences has a specific task. And if you break it down like that, and then if you have an instruction for each sentence, then it just makes it 10 times easier, you know? And then there's the... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and that's for the IELTS side of it. And then for the language side of it, I mean, buying a book is okay, and they can give you some of... They can give you advice and stuff, but still, it's good to have someone looking over your work and correcting it. Could you tell us just how that helped you, having somebody looking at the language side of it? You know, at the first place, when I was writing, um, you know, I didn't know what my problem is because I kept writing different topics. And then um, after that, I realized that uh, there is something wrong. Why I can't improve? Uh, then I realized that I, I should get somebody check my essay. Then uh, after I, I, uh, you helped me and um, you had my essay checked, I realized that what my problem are, and mm -hmm. then, and and I um, follow your instruction, and I try to um, fix that. So that that's the main thing helped me to um, improve my writing, and um, and and one more thing uh, was you know previously I used to write mainly five paragraph essay, but um, before I talking to you I had never realized you know what the point is. Because when you write four paragraph essay, uh, you uh, you can get uh, get a better mark for task respond uh, because you are able to support your argument better. Exactly. As you are able to su support your argument better, it means that you get better mark for task respond. So then, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I realized that. Yeah, um, I mean five paragraph. This is like exactly what you were saying before, like lots of different websites and lots of different tutors all have a different version of like what to teach and stuff. And the problem is, I think, that unless you go deep into one method, learning a little bit from it, from all the different sources is, is going to be very time consuming and you're going to have to check out, evaluate and all the rest of it. But one thing that I learned with the five paragraph model is that it means that each paragraph is going to be about two or three sentences. So you cannot really fully develop your argument, you know? Whereas if we do the four paragraph one, like we were doing in a sentence guide, it's just, you've got maybe two points and you just hammer home each point very clearly and coherently. And it, yeah, makes it a lot easier. Absolutely. And another point, you know, um, I, I realized that when I was working with you, um, I, I never, you know, bothered to check my essay after I finished that. So um, then, then after, yeah, so I mean, like, I, I, when I finished writing, I was like, okay, that's it. And then uh, my essay is okay. <laughs> then uh, when you emphasize on that, oh, it's, it, it is very important, for example, you said that spelling is very important. Article are very important. Plural and singular are very important. So I try to focus on those things. So all these instructions together help me to raise up my mark. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. There's so many things like that, which I, I try to put as all of them in that I know, but just off the top of my head, doing the essay check after you finish writing is an easy, it's one of the easiest ways to pick up, to pick up the points at the, uh, at the when you finish your exam, just go back through it from, from the last sentence right through to the first go through looking for those simple mistakes that you've made in previous essays. Yeah, that's, uh, that's right. Now, Jolan, tell me, what are the next topics that you've got some challenges with? Did you say it was the reading? Yes, the reading is uh, most challenging for me because, you know, sometimes you need to focus on, you know, different, um, you know, topics. And sometimes it's confusing. 
and uh, if you know another things it's it's like like a challenge for me it's a stress management and time management during the exam so when if i miss one question i get a stress and i cannot focus or like i get distracted so i think it's another problem that i face with i i, I don't think it's it's about the english knowledge mm. uh, I, it's more about how to learn the technique and how to tackle that uh-huh yeah and no that's that's absolutely right i was talking to one student and they said that they researched different techniques like one reading through the text as fast as possible uh, and then looking at the questions another technique was to look at the questions then read the text and then another technique was just to read like the first sentence of each paragraph in the reading text and then look yeah. at the questions and the point that this a very bright student I had made he said that what he would do would be first do lots of practice tests and isolate the area where he was falling down maybe it was multiple choice or yes. maybe it was true or false or something like that and isolate that area and first identify it then isolate it and then try different techniques and then measure which one got him the best result you know and yes. this is very time consuming but it helps you determine which is the best technique for you personally you know and then 100% I agree yeah yeah because it's true this isn't when we're talking about reading 3,000 4,000 words in 40 of in an hour this isn't a natural thing and it's not really testing your ability it's your English ability like you said it's an exam skill and to yeah. get these exam skills you've got to try different techniques and find out which one is the, the best one for you so exactly mm -hmm. and what and it's like a formula it's like a formula when you go for mathematics exam or physics you need to learn the formula then after that mm -hmm. you you need to put do that formula, use do that formula, and yep. make uh, the equation solve. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. And uh, tell me, what did you? How did you practice for the other areas for the for the listening and for the speaking? Uh, you know, my speaking. You know, I have been living in Australia for four years. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I have studied uh, my master. So, uh, like, in, as being living in a speaking, native uh, speaking country. So, it, uh, it helped, helped me to improve my English and uh, improve my, it's like, like naturally, without any effort, mm -hmm. um, it helped me to um, improve my um, speaking skill. And about the listening, um, it's the same. My main thing, uh, either in writing or listening is a spelling easily in um, I, you know in listening exam I miss six seven um, question just because of a spelling I, I I understand that write it down and then I uh, because of miss miss a spelling I lose the mark <laughs> ah, no, that's... as easy as that <laughs> in last exam I counted I counted I missed seven just because of the spelling Oh my it word. means that I got six easily. I could score seven, <laughs> 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 and, and, and it's because of you know because in during uh, my master you know I was all the time writing my um, essay and everything in Microsoft Word, so that's yeah. why you know uh, Microsoft Word uh, fix everything for fixes everything for me. So <laughs> that's why it happened to me. I, whenever I. <laughs> Let me tell you something funny. One of the things, two things, I give you examples, simple things. One of my misspelling was juice for last. Listen, one of them was egg. No way. I misspell <laughs> these two things. <laughs> you laugh at it because it's like a joke. And I'm like, how could you do that? I mean, <laughs> so it's a, it's not about the English knowledge. More, it's It's more about, you know, I have to sit. 
for one month, two months, just uh, practice my spelling. That's it. <laughs> Maybe next time I go for writing, I get 7.5, 8, because <laughs> the, I got lots of spelling mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> so, how are, you, um, is, how are you going to improve your spelling then? Are you just going to use, yeah, I guess you could just use Microsoft Word, no? And just start writing. No. <laughs> just that's it's gonna make it. <laughs> right. It's gonna make you make it worse. Worse. Uh, so I, I think I think I need to go through the books. You know, uh, one of the uh, teachers uh, suggested me suggested I to um, read Reader Digest. It's like a magazine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So she said that like it's it's very useful if I do that. Yeah. And, um, to read it for like one hour a day so it might be useful and also when I don't know how the spelling of any word is like so I just go through it and I learn it you know, to write each word ten times <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, I'll give you I'll send you a PDF that I have which is just full okay. of spelling rules yeah which would definitely okay. help you because it, it's like going back to what you said before about the formula, you know. Unfortunately, English yeah. is a bit of a disaster regarding set rules and breaking rules. But there's like the 80 time, eighty percent of the time the rules can be followed, and you can get good spelling just by knowing the rules. So I'll send you that. Yeah. That's one good way to Thank improve. You. You're welcome. And the Great. second way is when you do. Hopefully, that's another thing. Continue writing your essays. Yeah? Yeah. Because you don't want to lose that skill. And you might think, oh, it's easy, I've got the seven now. But if you don't, I would recommend you write at least one essay a week just to maintain it, you know, just yeah. to keep the skill going. And turn off the essay check and then switch it back on again. And then copy paste all those words that you spelt wrong. And maybe even just keep them in a diary. And keep that diary with you, you know, or keep them in Evernote on your on your phone and just make a note of them. Yeah. And send them to the yeah. app afterwards and then just do – and another thing, also just do um, spelling check, spell tests like at school. You know, when we were a kid, just write out 10 words. Yeah, yeah, and like, yeah. I'm going to learn these today, you know. I'm going to write them out 100 times each one. Job's done. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely would help. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, Jolan, that was um, awesome. Thanks very much, and um, thanks for telling me about your results, about jumping from a six to a seven using the sentence guide. I was really happy when you sent me that email. It was awesome. It made my day. So, um, not a problem. It's a, it's a reality. So you know, you uh, have done a lot, and it's uh, really valuable what you have done because. Um, it's definitely, I can say, it, it's the only website and sentence guide I found the most useful, you know, uh, because it's very straight uh, to the point, and it's really what um, students are looking for. Yeah. To jump from band six to <laughs> seven. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Thank you, Jola. <laughs> no problem at all. Yeah, you should be working with me here in Spain. <laughs> uh, I, I would love to. <laughs> maybe in the future, maybe in future I come, um, you know, Madrid, meet you sometime. Yeah, yeah. After we'll set I up. get my PR. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. After I finish with English and IELTS, I get time to travel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You could come here and learn Spanish. We'll set up an IELTS Academy because you'll have learned everything. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right there, Joel. Well, thank you very much, mate. Thank you so much, and I'll be chatting with you. Remember to leave your email for updates.